Um, if you could introduce yourself, and normally I don't have people do this, but I'd like you to tell us in a couple lines or, or less what Electrovea does, why you've been invited, because we have a battery expert on the panel. Thank you. Yeah, delighted to be here. Uh, so Electrovia, we're listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. We're probably now North America's last remaining battery pure play player in North America. There were several others on the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange over the last few years, but they've mostly exited. And so what's happened now is there's a very few players in a global market that is now starting to see major surges in both the electric vehicle markets as well as the emerging smart grid, smart city, renewable energy, firming the grid markets, as well as a bunch of other industrial markets. So Electrovia is based, surprisingly, here in Toronto in the GTA. Uh, we're out in Mississauga for those who want to come by our factory. Uh, we also now have a major footprint in Europe with Europe's largest battery uh, player as well. So Electrovia is now the largest uh, battery player in both North America and in Europe because we've acquired a former Daimler Evonik joint venture. So we have our own gigawatt hour plant based in Europe and we have our sizable plant based here in Toronto as well. We have about 500 patents on lithium battery technology and we really go the distance in terms of uh, investing in our supply chain where we see some really advanced new materials and so we're very familiar with, with um, the exciting work that's done uh, across your industry and uh, in the value added processing that happens uh, upstream of that. So I heard you correct, you have 500 patents for lithium batteries. That's right, we keep a lot of patent lawyers employed. Okay, so Peter, this is the person who can answer your question. Okay, do you want to stand up and ask it or do I have it right? Why lithium batteries? Well, if you... oh, stand up and ask it. Uh, Amanda's got the microphone. Why lithium on the plaza of Electro? It's one metal of many. You know, Sony started in the 1980s, set fire in the 1990s. Yeah. And it seems like it's just the default. Ah, let's keep doing it because we're doing it. So, why is it lithium and what's the next better thing? Ah, uh, great, great question. So this actually takes us down to the fundamentals of battery technology. And if we take a step back and if we look at battery technologies, it's one of the industries that's actually really slow to change. If you look at lead acid batteries, I mean, that's been around for 150 years plus now, and it's still innovating. And I think what that shows you is uh, the elasticity of technology is there. And batteries are, are one technology that is it's there for a long time and it's slow to change. So if you look at battery history after lead acid, then you had the NICADs, the nickel metal hydride batteries that were really a big uh, push in the 70s, really came to the market really though in the 80s. If you remember your old cell phones, um, they were all nickel metal hydride and only then in, in the 90s really did you see a push into lithium and it first moved into the consumer space. And so those innovations in the lithium battery industry uh, over overnight, within 12 months, the consumer electronics industry switched 100% from nickel metal hydride and NICADs to lithium. If you look though now at lithium and where it's at, oh my gosh, we're in the very, very early days of lithium batteries. If you look at the theoretical capacity, we're still in the first 5%. So we have a long way to go. And you see that because every year there's over a billion dollars spent in fundamental uh, parts of, of the battery technology. So there's a huge number of patents and waves coming through and you'll see changes each day with new flavors of chemistries. Um, you can see the impact in your cell phones. If you look at what's happening in, in the uh, consumer electronics industries, iPhones, uh, tablets, and everything else, they have so much more larger screens, smaller size, smaller footprint. Each of that is because there's another wave of battery innovation happening behind it in major, major steps. So. Um, if you look though at the future, uh, what's going to happen next? Well, over the next 10, 20, 50 years, you'll see a domination of, of lithium battery technology. Looking beyond that, uh, and there we're limited by our physics, our chemistry, our periodic table. Uh, next would be a fluorine-based battery that's very, very exciting. Um, it's almost too exciting though from a safety perspective. It's highly reactive, not very stable. And so right now you're only even beginning to see that even beginning the first hints of it being looked at in uh, academic environments now. So years and decades away. Yeah. So isn't everybody happy that they're here in the middle of the afternoon? I told you it was going to get exciting. <laughs>